We continue today with chapter 13, From Perception to Knowledge. All healing is released from the past. That is why the Holy Spirit is the only healer. He teaches that the past does not exist, a fact which belongs to the sphere of knowledge, and which therefore no one in the world can know. It would indeed be impossible to be in the world with this knowledge, for the mind that knows this unequivocally knows also it dwells in eternity and utilizes no perception at all. It therefore does not consider where it is, because the concept where does not mean anything to it. It knows that it is everywhere, just as it has everything and forever. The very real difference between perception and knowledge becomes quite apparent if you consider this. There is nothing partial about knowledge. Every aspect is whole, and therefore no aspect is separate. You are an aspect of knowledge, being in the mind of God, who knows you. All knowledge must be yours, for in you is all knowledge. Perception, at its loftiest, is never complete. Even the perception of the Holy Spirit, as perfect as perception can be, is without meaning in heaven. Perception can reach everywhere under His guidance, for the vision of Christ beholds everything in light. Yet no perception, however holy, will last forever. Perfect perception, then, has many elements in common with knowledge, making transfer to it possible. Yet the last step must be taken by God, because the last step in your redemption, which seems to be in the future, was accomplished by God in your creation. The separation has not interrupted it. Creation cannot be interrupted. The separation is merely a faulty formulation of reality, with no effect at all. The miracle, without a function in heaven, is needful here. Aspects of reality can still be seen, and they will replace aspects of unreality. Aspects of reality can be seen in everything and everywhere, yet only God can gather them together by crowning them as one with the final gift of eternity. Apart from the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit has no function. He is not separate from either, being in the mind of both and knowing that mind is one. He is a thought of God, and God has given him to you because he has no thoughts he does not share. His message speaks of timelessness in time, and that is why Christ's vision looks on everything with love. Yet even Christ's vision is not his reality. The golden aspects of reality that spring to light under his loving gaze are partial glimpses of the heaven that lies beyond them. This is the miracle of creation, that it is one forever. Every miracle you offer to the Son of God is but the true perception of one aspect of the whole. Though every aspect is the whole, you cannot know this until you see that every aspect is the same, perceived in the same light, and therefore one. Everyone seen without the past thus brings you nearer to the end of time by bringing healed and healing sight into the darkness and enabling the world to see. For light must come into the darkened world to make Christ's vision possible even here. Help him to give his gift of light to all who think they wander in the darkness, and let him gather them into his quiet sight that makes them one. They are all the same, all beautiful and equal in their holiness, and he will offer them unto his Father as they were offered unto him. There is one miracle, as there is one reality. And every miracle you do contains them all, 
as every aspect of reality you see blends quietly into the one reality of God. The only miracle that ever was is God's most holy Son, created in the one reality that is his Father. Christ's vision is his gift to you. His being is his Father's gift to him. Be you content with healing, for Christ's gift you can bestow, and your Father's gift you cannot lose. Offer Christ's gift to everyone and everywhere, for miracles offered the Son of God through the Holy Spirit attune you to reality. The Holy Spirit knows your part in the redemption, and who are you seeking, and where to find them. Knowledge is far beyond your individual concern. You who are part of it, and all of it, need only realize that it is of the Father, not of you. Your role in the redemption leads you to it, by re-establishing its oneness in your mind. When you have seen your brothers as yourself, you will be released to knowledge, having learned to free yourself through him who knows of freedom. Unite with me under the holy banner of his teaching, and as we grow in strength, the power of God's Son will move in us, and we will leave no one untouched and no one left alone. And suddenly time will be over, and we will all unite in the eternity of God the Father. The holy light you saw outside yourself, in every miracle you offered to your brothers, will be returned to you. And knowing that the light is in you, your creations will be there with you, as you are in your Father. As miracles in this world join you to your brothers, so do your creations establish your fatherhood in heaven. You are the witness to the fatherhood of God, and He has given you the power to create the witnesses to your fatherhood in heaven. The miracle that God created is perfect, as are the miracles that you established in His name. They need no healing, nor do you, when you accept them. Yet, in this world your perfection is unwitnessed. God knows it, but you do not and so you do not share his witness to it, nor do you witness unto him, for reality is witnessed to as one. God waits your witness to his Son and to himself. The miracles you do on earth are lifted up to heaven and to him. They witness to what you do not know as they reach the gates of heaven. God will open them. For never would he leave his own beloved son outside them, and beyond himself. And from the workbook, Lesson 101, God's will for me is perfect happiness. Today we will continue with the theme of happiness. This is a key idea in understanding what salvation means. You still believe it asks for suffering as penance for your, quote, sins. This is not so. Yet you must think it so while you believe that sin is real, and that God's Son can sin. If sin is real, then punishment is just and cannot be escaped. Salvation thus cannot be purchased but through suffering. If sin is real, then happiness must be illusion, for they cannot both be true. The sinful warrant only death and pain, and it is this they ask for, for they know it waits for them, and it will seek them out and find them somewhere, sometime, in some form that evens the account they owe to God. They would not escape him in their fear, and yet he will pursue and they cannot escape. If sin is real, salvation must be pain. Pain is the cost of sin, and suffering can never be escaped if sin is real. Salvation must be feared, for
where it will kill, but slowly, taking everything away before it grants the welcome boon of death to victims who are little more than bones before salvation is appeased. Its wrath is boundless, merciless, but wholly just. Who would seek out such savage punishment? Who would not flee salvation and attempt in every way he can to drown the voice which offers it to him? Why would he try to listen and accept its offering? If sin is real, its offering is death and meted out in cruel form to match the vicious wishes in which sin is born. If sin is real, salvation has become your bitter enemy, the curse of God upon you who have crucified His Son. You need the practice periods today. The exercises teach sin is not real, and all that you believe must come from sin will never happen for it has no cause. Accept atonement with an open mind which cherishes no lingering belief that you have made a devil of God's Son. There is no sin. We practice with this thought as often as we can today because it is the basis for today's idea. God's will for you is perfect happiness because there is no sin, and suffering is causeless. Joy is just, and pain is but the sign you have misunderstood yourself. Fear not the will of God, but turn to it in confidence that it will set you free from all the consequences sin has wrought in feverish imagination. Say, God's will for me is perfect happiness. There is no sin. It has no consequence. So should you start your practice periods and then attempt again to find the joy these thoughts will introduce into your mind. Give these five minutes gladly to remove the heavy load you lay upon yourself with the insane belief that sin is real. Today escape from madness. You are set on freedom's road. And now, today's idea brings wings to speed you on, and hope to go still faster to the waiting goal of peace. There is no sin. Remember this today, and tell yourself as often as you can, God's will for me is perfect happiness. This is the truth, because there is no sin. God's will for me is perfect happiness. Today we open up to a sinless world. Today we would have the Holy Spirit remove every stain of sin that was falsely perceived and falsely believed. The Holy Spirit is the only healer. The Holy Spirit undoes the belief in linear time forever. He teaches that the past does not exist, a fact which belongs to the sphere of knowledge, and which therefore no one in the world can know. Today, I would open up to the timeless experience of my very being. Today, I would let go of concepts of past and future, concepts of location. In heaven, where does not mean anything. Everything is everywhere, forever in the mind of God. There is nothing partial in heaven. And in perception, in healed perception, every aspect is whole, and therefore no aspect is separate. 
In a hologram, the part contains the whole. In holistic perception, every aspect is the same, for it is whole. Wholeness is the only thing that healed perception can perceive. Today we take a step towards the happy dream. We will see aspects of reality in everything we experience, because healed perception envelops and includes everything and everyone. The miracle of creation is that it is one forever. In the stillness and quiet, we behold this oneness. As we look upon the world, we give thanks for our brothers and sisters. They are all the same, all beautiful and equal in their holiness. Today we are content to be healed. Today we are content to extend the gift of Christ and look upon the Christ in all that we see. Today oneness is re-established in our mind, in Christ vision. Today we see our brothers and sisters as ourself. We behold the meaning of love thy neighbor as thyself. In the miracle, we join with all our brothers and sisters. The miracle that God created is perfect, as are the miracles that we establish in His name. Today we will draw upon the witnesses for Christ. Today we see that no one is left outside our healed and holy perception. There is no sin. Without sin there can be no suffering. And without sin, happiness alone is real. God's will for me is perfect happiness. Punishment cannot exist. There is no sin. Today I accept atonement with an open mind. There is no sin. There is no sin. It has no consequence. We practice today in joy, sharing and extending this one holy true idea. God's will for me is perfect happiness. Amen.